All right. All right, Israel and Zion, I'm back with um another part of the... Well, I'm going to try to make it the last part about who the children of the devil is. Now, we're going to talk about... Now, we, we understand and know that Satan is the tempter, right? Satan is the tempter, and the children of the devil are sinners, right? Now, we have understanding of that and, you know... Uh, what happens to the children of the devil in the end and who are the wheat and the tears and um, I'm going to finish off now I'm going to show you the heathen is the wicked you see what I'm saying the heathen is the wicked um, they are they are the seed of the devil um, so called negroes that are sinners also are the seed of the devil you see what I'm saying because the seed of God and Christ, like I said, they are spiritual beings, all right, and they're born again, so they won't be able to sin no more, all right, they're spiritual beings in this flesh, now, like, that's why I always explain, just because you look like a so-called Negro, don't make you a Hebrew, don't make you a Jew, don't make you an Israelite, don't make you a son of Abraham, you see, because you got to look bigger than the flesh, you see what I'm saying? This is the flesh. The f this this is how the flesh. This is the flesh. This is how you know the Israelites in ancient times always looked uh, out on outward appearance. You see what I'm saying? But to be a real Jew, you have to be one inward because you could look like a so-called Negro, right? And you're not keeping the law of God, then you're not a child to God. You see what I'm saying? You're not a you're not a child to the most high of Christ. Because his kids, God's kids, God's children and Christ's children are going to be like Christ and God. They're going to be righteous, they're going to be holy. They're going to uh be pure. They're going to be perfect. They're going to be walking in love. They're going to be, you know, keeping the law of God in the inward man. You know, they're going to be um yeah, righteous, holy, you know, um, doing the right things, you know, and um, they're not going to be sinning. The Israelites in ancient times, they were not the seed. A lot of them was not the, the, the seed of, you know, of Christ, of, of the most high, because they were doing the works of the flesh and the land. There was a promised seed that was going to come out of Israel, though. That was going to keep the law of God in the end with man. You see what I'm saying? That's to whom the promise was to. It was to that seed. And that seed belongs to Christ. And if that seed belongs to Christ, then they are the son. They are the children of Abraham. And then they also are the children of God through Christ. Okay. Um. So just because you look like a so-called Negro on the outside appearance don't make you just automatically an Israelite or a Jew, you see what I'm saying? Because it's even deeper than that. You see what I'm saying? It's even deeper because the promised seed are one with Christ. They're one with Christ, and Christ is one with God. So the promised seed is one with God, and they are the body of Christ, the church of Christ. So if they're the body and the church of Christ, the Bible tells us there's neither Jew nor Greek nor Gentile nor barbarian nor Scythian because they're one now. You see what I'm saying? So in the body of Christ, you're not even you're not even a Jew. You see what I'm saying? Yo, because you're one now with Christ. You're one with God. So they are the true. This is why they are the true Christians. You see what I'm saying? They are the true Christians. They're going to suffer in the body. They're going to suffer and go through persecution because they are partaker of Christ's sufferings. Because if they're part of him, they're one with him. So therefore, they just like he suffered, they're going to suffer. You see what I'm saying? So there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor Jew nor Gentile. Because they're, they're Christians. They're, they're one with Christ. You see what I'm saying? So if they're one with Christ and Christ is one with God. Therefore, they are God. You understand? 
So it's deeper than calling yourself a Jew or a Hebrew or an Israelite because the promised seed are God. The promised seed are God. So they are God. That's why he said ye are gods. The promised seed is God. That's That was the whole point. It goes back to Adam and Eve. You see what I'm saying? When the serpent told Eve, you know, for God know in the day that you take of the of the tree, then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods. See, God already set it up from the beginning. That was the point was for him because he created the world for Israel's sake. But for the righteous Israelites, not the wicked Israelites, but for the righteous and the righteous Israelites, they are gods. They are God. That's the point. You see? That's why the Bible says, for in him, Christ, dwell of all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You see, because you have the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and they are one. That's why God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. See, it was the point for, for God to make Israel and Zion in his image. So the point was for them to be conformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ, because Christ is the image of the invisible God. Don't only look out on the outside appearance, like I always say. Christ is the image of the invisible God. So the point was for them to be conformed into the image of his son, since he's the image of the invisible God. Therefore, they are changed into the Christ. <laughs> you understand? They changed, they changed into Jesus. That's the point is for Christ to be formed inside of them, each and every one of them. That's why when Christ is formed into, in, in them, you know, they have put on Christ. They have put on the word. The word abide in them. Christ is in them. They won't be able to sin no more. You see what I'm saying? Because they're born again here. You see what I'm saying? In the, in the mind. They're born again. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So therefore, they put on what? The knowledge. The word. The wisdom. The word of life. The eternal life. They put on Christ. So therefore, in the end, they're going to be changed into Christ, who is God. So just as Christ looked, look, they're going to look just like Christ. They bore the image of the earthly, they're going to bear the image of the heavenly because the, the, the first man, Adam, you know, was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit. You know, Adam, he was, he was from the earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's God. Okay, so it's, it's deeper than just, you know, going around saying I'm a Hebrew, I'm a Jew, I'm an Israelite. Because the promise seed, they, they, are, they are God. You see what I'm saying? The promise seed is God. All right. Um, in the body of Christ, you're neither a Jew nor a Gentile. Because you're one with him. So therefore you are Christ. Well the promised seed is Christ. The promised seed is God. <laughs> okay. Because Christ's body is the fullness that, full of, that fills all. Right. Because it pleased the father that in him shall all fullness dwell. All right. And he's the head. He's the head of the church. Okay. So you got Christ and then you have God. Right. And then the body of Christ. The members is the church. Israel and Zion, the saints, the elect. All right. So now let's head into it, though. We're going to talk now. We're going to because the heathen, like I said, the heathen never knew the most high. Right. The heathen never knew God. So the heathen always been the wicked. That's why the Bible said the earth been given into the hands of the wicked who have the earth. The, 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 the heathen nations has been given into their hand. You see what I'm saying? So, like it says, like the Bible says in Proverbs um, 29 and 2, when the, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. You see, that's why you have all this, all these things going on and, and wickedness and evil throughout all the earth because the wicked is bearing rule. But their rule, their end is, their, their, their kingdom is coming to an end. OK, and that's when, you know, the righteous, the saints, that's why it says in Daniel and the saints shall possess it. They're going to take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever with the son of man, who is Christ, Jesus Christ. 
okay? Because their kingdom and Christ's kingdom is never going to be destroyed. You, you know, you, you read, the, read the book of Daniel chapter 2, when Daniel was explaining, the Lord allowed Daniel to explain to Nebuchadnezzar about the dream. See, the four kingdoms, which is the four beasts, okay? And they will they will have their time. You see, but in the Bible says, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. So during those kingdoms, the Lord is setting up a kingdom, which is Israel and Zion. That's why Jesus said the kingdom was within you. You see what I'm saying? Because Zion and Israel, the saints of the elect, are being builded up right now. They're being builded. <laughs> That's why the Son of Man, Jesus, is going to, when he come back, he's going to, you know, stand on the Mount Zion. Zion is Judah, Jerusalem. He's going to stand on Mount Zion. And Zion is going to be showed to all men being builded. You see, because that's the 144,000. Okay, they are the kingdom of Christ and God. The kingdom is within you, he told them. That's why John saw the new heavenly Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God in um, Revelations, I think, 21. Okay, because... His bride had made herself ready. You see? So the Lord is waiting for his precious fruit. And he have long patience for it. You see? Because he's building and working on Israel and Zion right now. Okay? All right. So the... Yeah, so... Um, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous is in authority, the people rejoice because that's who the Lord created this world for, the righteous and who are Israelites. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the wicked. Okay. Let's find out who's the wicked because the wicked is the nations. That's who the wicked is. Let's, hope, let's head over to Second Ezra. Chapter 4. So the wicked are sinners. And if the wicked is sinners, then the wicked is, the, the wicked is sinners. And sinners are the children of the devil. So that's showing you the whole world is the children of the devil. Second Edges 4, 29 to 32. Second Edges 4, 29 to 32. All right. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, see because see the Lord is explaining to Ezra's here, because you have to understand that evil have to be put out first in order for good to come. So this is why the first is last and the last is first. That's why the Bible says Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning that follows because. Um, Esau came out first But Jacob took hold of Esau's hill You see So Esau is the end of the world Jacob is the beginning that follows The first is last And the last is first You see so Esau Came out first right So the first is last That's why he's the end of the world Now Jacob came out second all right. Yeah, Jacob came out second. So therefore, it, the, he he's the last, but he's really the first. You see what I'm saying? Because the first is last and the last is first. You understand what I'm saying? So he came out second, but he's first. Because his kingdom, Jacob's kingdom, Israel, their kingdom is next, which is forever. It's not going to pass away. All right. So the Lord said, if therefore that which is sown be not be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. So if the evil don't pass away, then the good cannot come. You see what I'm saying? The evil have to be put out. That's why the Lord said, I've broken the evil in pieces and created the good. I live, save the Lord. The Lord have broken the staff of the wicked, the power of the wicked and the powers of the rulers. You see, because when he came in the flesh and he died on the tree on the cross, see, that's when the Lord, you see what I'm saying? Because God is only the, he's only the God of, of the living and not the dead because Satan had the power of death. 
But now the Lord is the Lord of the living and the dead. You see what I'm saying? Because he made, you know, the Father Jesus made Christ, his son and word, both Lord and Christ. You see what I'm saying? He made them both Lord and Christ. So therefore, Christ is Christ in the word is one with God. So Christ is God. So now, that's what the Bible says for he's the Lord of the living and the dead now. That's what Christ said, I have the keys of death and hell. You see what I'm saying? He's God. That was he's God. Christ is God. Okay? And um Yeah, so now the Lord is the Lord of the living and the dead. All right, and when he died on the tree on the cross, now you see what I'm saying, he he got the keys of death and hell, and that's why Satan is going to be cast out. You see what I'm saying? The accuser of the brethren. All right, which accused him before our God day and night, as the scriptures say in Revelations. All right, because Satan is the accuser of Israel. He always been the accuser of Israel. Read the Old Testament. He's the only the accuser of Israel, because Satan is after Israel and Zion. All right. So then cannot it come that is sown with good for the grain of evil seed have been sown in where in the heart of Adam from the beginning. See, for the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning and how much ungodliness have it brought up until this time and how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come. See, because. Remember I showed you the wheat and the tears. Who have who sold the tears? Who sold the tears is the devil. You see what I'm saying? It's so much. See, you gotta understand that the whole entire world is the seed of the devil. God has a, a remnant. His seed is a remnant. They're all Israelites. They're all, you know, Israel. The whole entire world is the children of the devil. You see what I'm saying? Because he sowed so many tears. He sowed so many tears. Remember, it goes back to the beginning. When God told the serpent, thou art cursed above all cattle. And he said he's going to put enmity between his uh, the woman's seed and his uh, her seed. I'll put enmity between him and the woman. In between thy seed and 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 uh, his seed, her seed and his seed, because serpent has a seed. The serpent has a seed. It's the truth. And the serpent's seed is the whole world. This is why Christ was explaining in Matthew thirteen about the wheat and the tears, because the good the the Son of Man sold the good tears, as he was saying. You see, this is why he knew his called seed. The Bible. That's what the Bible says. Um, Christ was from the beginning with, But was manifest in these last times for you For the promised seed Israel and Zion The elected saints You see what I'm saying Because God already knew them from the beginning But he came in the last days for them For the for the seed The promised seed that is given to Christ From God He didn't come for the whole entire planet As they teach you He didn't come for the whole entire world You see he came for the world of Israel But only a few from the world of Israel, not even all Israel. He came for those that were giving to him from God out of the world of Israel. He didn't come for the whole entire world. You got to understand how deep it really goes. He came for his promised seed. You see what I'm saying? His lost sheep that, you know, that was lost. That was the point. Because they were lost, they don't know who they are. They, they're born into this dark world. You understand? But like I said, when the light, the gospel wakes them up to who they truly are. That's why they turn from their old self to the new man, which is the knowledge, which is God. The light, the gospel, Christ is the light. You see, the God of this world, Satan, have blinded the minds, like the Bible says. But lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And that's what happens. You see, God's elect, his saints are in this flesh. They're born in this flesh, but they're spiritual beings. So when they read the gospel, and they, you know, the Lord 
open their eyes up, their spirit be a witness with his spirit that they are the sons of God. The word is his spirit in life. So then they wake up and turn from their old self because now they know who they truly are. You see what I'm saying? Because like I said, the scriptures are speaking directly to his saints. That's why they're going to be able to understand and wake up because it's, the Bible is speaking directly to them. You understand what I'm saying? It's spiritual. This is what I'm trying to say. You can't look at the flesh. You got to understand it's all spiritual. It's spiritual. Okay? So, the devil seed, this is why the devil seed cannot understand. You see what I'm saying? The, 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 the saints, the elect, God seed, they have God's spirit in them. The words is spirit and life. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. All right. So the devil seed is the whole entire world. That's what Christ was explaining the wheat and the tids. You got to understand that. Okay. So now. Let's go back. The second Ezra is four. For the grain, in verse 30, for the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness have it brought up until this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? See, the time of threshing. Call me over here to Matthew. This is why John said this here. Matthew chapter 3. This is why he was telling the Jews here. Listen to what John was telling them. To the time of threshing come, right? He told Ezra, right? Matthew 3 and 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, old generation of vipers. See? Because they are sinners who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth, therefore, bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Right. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. You see that? Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down in what? cast into the fire so that's what happens with satan's seed you see if they if you if no good fruit is being brought forth it's cast into the fire and that's why the saints the elect are able to bring forth fruit through christ because he's divine without him they won't be able to do nothing that's what christ was explaining to them in john 15 1 to 6 without him they wouldn't be able to do nothing but see that's why god said the mercy because through him, they're able to bring forth fruit because, you see, they have God's spirit in them, the saints and the elect. And, you see, they're going to do the will of the Lord. So they're going to bring forth fruit through Christ. He is the gospel through this gospel. That's how. Because they're, they're going to be born again. You see what I'm saying? They're going to be born. They're going to put off the old man. They're going to put on a new man. They're going to be renewed in the spirit of their mind. They're going to put on the knowledge. You see, the new man. Therefore, put on uh, put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Right? Put on Therefore, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. They're going to put on the word, the knowledge, the wisdom, the word of life, the eternal life. That's what they're going to put on. God. Okay? That's why they're going to be changed into his image at his appearing. Because they have put them on. They have put the light on. The light is Christ. You see the word. So they're going to put the light on. At his appearing. They're going to put on God. Because God is the light. That's what the Bible says. The light that no man can approach. Because nobody's seen God before. Moses only seen God. Like the Lord said. He's merciful, merciful to whom he want to be merciful to. So he allowed Moses to see his back parts but not his face because no one can see his face and live 
But the saints elect will see God's face in the end because they have his name written in their forehead. Okay? So, therefore, and his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. The Father's name in heaven is Jesus. This is why Christ said, I come in my Father's name. Because the Father's name is Jesus Christ. And Christ came in his Father's name. And that's how the saints are the elect. And the elect are sealed. They, they, they have their Father's name written in their foreheads. You see what I'm saying? Because they believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see? And, um... Yeah, a lot of people don't understand this. Is that the Father's name is Jesus. His name always been Jesus. You see what I'm saying? But... That, you know, we'll talk. That's for another talk, but you know, is 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 deep though. But um, yeah. So what I was saying. Yeah. So the saints, the elect, they're gonna do the will of the Lord. You see, what I'm saying they're gonna do the will of God. Um. See, because they, they have Christ in them. Christ is going to be in them. God's spirit, the spirit of God in Christ is in them. You see, all right, let's keep going. Verse 11, so John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So John is letting them know that he indeed baptized with water, the physical water, unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. That's Christ, Jesus, because he's the Lord from heaven. That's God Almighty. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay? Who, listen to this. Whose fan is in his hand. And he, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. Remember the, the wheat and the tears. His wheat is the saints and the elect. He gonna put them where in the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with um, the rest. That's the, the 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 chaff is the tears. You see what I'm saying? But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. See, because he's only gonna put his wheat in the garner, but the tears that the devil sown is gonna be burned up. That's why he just said to Ezra, and how much shall yet. How much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? You see what I'm saying? So let's get back. You got to understand because God flooded the first world, right? With water. But this time he's going to burn, you know, burn this world up with fire. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he's going to, the world, he's going to burn it all up with fire. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because he promised he wouldn't flood the world again. That's not how you're going to do it. This time is going to be with fire. Okay? That's why the Lord says, Not my word like fire and like a hammer that break the rocks in pieces, because the word is coming back. You see what I'm saying? The word is coming back. And that's why when you read the second Ezra 13, the word, when Christ spoke, those nations that wanted to fight him was burned up. That's why Edris was like, Edris seen that, you know, and, 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 uh, I think it was the dream he had about it and it was nothing to be perceived, but dust and smoke, because you gotta understand the word is flesh. The word was made flesh. The word has a body. You see? So when he speak, the, the Lord Christ don't need an instrument of sword in his hand to fight these, these nations. He don't need a physical sword because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. He is the word. So when the scriptures of Revelation said he had a two-edged sword out his mouth, you got to understand what that's talking about. He's the living word. So when he speak, all things is going to burn. You understand? Okay. Let's let's keep reading. Let's go back to Second Ezra 4. And... Um, we left off at 30, verse 31. Ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed have um, brought forth. The evil seed is who? The seed of the devil. So the Lord is saying to Ezra, ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed have brought forth. So the devil tears is all over. You see what I'm saying? 
the whole entire world is the devil's seed. God's seed is in the midst is in the midst of Gentiles, in the midst of these nations, in, in the midst of the of the wicked. That's why the Lord going to separate them when he returns. Because his seed is the Lord's seed is only a remnant. That's why they taught us to make you think that God loves everybody. This is why they made the churches on the corner. To lie to you. To lie to the world. That's why the Bible says Satan deceived the whole world. Because Satan was the one that sowed the evil seed. But he make you think that you could come to God like God loves everybody. But that's why the saints and elect going to wake up that this world is a lie. Because they're not of the of this world. They're not of this world like Christ is not of this world. They look for, just as the scripture said, they look for a new heaven and a new earth where dwell righteousness. Nothing but righteousness there. You got to understand this world is very evil and wicked. Very evil and wicked. But that's why the saints are waiting patiently for the Lord. Okay, so that is why it's very deep. It's all backwards in this world. It's backwards. Um, yeah, so that's why they, you know, they had to deceive the people to make you think that, you know, God came for everybody. And he loves everybody. You understand? But he only came for his seed. You understand? He only came for his saints, his elect, whom he knew from the beginning. You understand what I'm saying? Satan is the one that sowed the tears, which is the whole entire world. God's, God's seed and Christ's seed is a remnant. is a smaller remnant. That's who Christ came for. And that's the truth. And I just got to say the truth. I... I Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. That's why you see all the wickedness going on. And, and you know, the nation's doing wickedness and evil things is because they're not of God. They belong to the devil. It's the truth. If we doing wickedness and sin, we belong to the devil. God's seed is not sinners. They, they're not sinners. They, they were in the flesh, yeah. When they woke up, they, they put off that old man and his wicked deeds. Because they're not, they don't belong in this flesh. They're just here until they're waiting for the redemption of their body at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Okay. So the Lord said, ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed hath brought forth. And when the ears shall be cut down, which are without what? Number. Because they're going to be cut down and it's without what? Number. Because the tears is so many. That's why the, the Lord said in 2 Andrews 9 and 22, Let my grape be kept, the one he working on, his seed. Let the multitude of them perish that was born in vain. You see what I'm saying? They don't, they don't want the world to know this truth. But they had to will everybody in with God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And, you know, the church is on corners, which the Bible tells you that God don't dwell in temples made with man's hands. But nobody asks and questions that. Because they're not going to let you know that the saints, the elect, the church, the body of Christ is the temple of the living God. Their body where God and the Holy Ghost dwell. They're not going to let you know that because they have to keep deceiving you. This is why the, this is why Jesus said the truth shall make you free. If the son of man set you free, you are free indeed because the truth is the truth. And a lot of people going to get offended. That's why he said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Christ didn't come to bring peace in this world here. This is what we got to understand. This world is looking for peace and peace and peace. The Lord, he didn't come to, to bring peace in this world, but a sword, division. He 
He came for his seed. That's who he came for. You see, to take him out of here. Because they to, to, so that they can be where he is. Where is Christ? In heaven. So that's why through his blood and the flesh, they're able to enter into heaven. The saints, the elect. That's why the Bible says, he had made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in the ages to come. This kingdom here is done. This kingdom here, you got to understand how it works. This kingdom is divided against itself. So that's why the Lord said the kingdom divided against itself is not going to stand. You see, this is why the this is why the Lord allowed Daniel to explain to Nebuchadnezzar about the fourth fourth kingdom, which is the fourth beast and the toes, which is part iron and part miry clay. You see, because it's that kingdom, that last part, the feet and the toes are partially strong and partially broken. The fourth kingdom is divided against itself. So a kingdom divided against itself is not going to stand. That's why this world is so much is so much division in this world right now. And and sedition among men and riots. You see what I'm saying? Because in the kingdom, this is why the kingdom of God and Christ is going to stand forever is because there ain't going to be no division. There's no division. There won't be no division in the kingdom of God and Christ. Why? Because they all going to have the same mind. What mind is that? The mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. Who have known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. If we have the mind of Christ, we have the mind of the Lord because Christ is the knowledge, the wisdom of God, the word of God. <laughs> So that's why the the church, the scriptures talk about the church having the same mind. You see, because if they're all on one accord with one mind, with the same mind, which is the mind of Christ, if they've been taught by Christ, the kingdom won't fall. You see what I'm saying? The kingdom won't fall is because they're going to have the mind of the Lord, the mind of Christ. So that kingdom is going to stand forever. There won't be no more division. Because in the time of Solomon, there was division. That's why the kingdom was split into two nations and two kingdoms, the southern and northern kingdom of Israel. But this is why God had to come in the flesh to reconcile them through his body, to make them twain one, one through his body. So therefore, they, there won't be no division. Petition means division. That's why it says in Ephesians 2, 14 and 16. You see, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for the making of himself a twain, one new man, so making peace. You see, because petition is division. So there won't be no division in the body of Christ. So they're one in the body of Christ now. So there won't be no division there because they're going to all have the mind of Christ. If they all have the mind of Christ, they're the body in the church of Christ. Christ is the head and then God. That kingdom is going to stand forever because there won't be no division there. That's what Paul was explaining to them. Uh, uh, where there's envy and there's strife, are you not carnal and walk as men? Where there's um, envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? You see what I'm saying? Because the saints, the elect, the church of God, the body of Christ, they're going to put off the mortal thoughts. They're going to put off the weak nature, the flesh. That's what the Bible says. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. No man could come to me except the Father which sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So they will all have the same mind. That's why the Lord, that's why the Lord said in Daniel chapter 2, in the days of these kings, which is Nebuchadnezzar, the Medio Persian Empire, the um Alexander the Great. And then you have the last kingdom, which I believe is the Romans. No, it was the Romans. Yeah, I believe it's the Romans. But in those kings, in those kingdoms, the God of heaven was setting up the kingdom during those times. See, and the kingdom is within Israel. That's why it, the Bible said it won't pass away. It would never be destroyed because they're going to all have the same mind of the Lord. So therefore, that kingdom going to stand forever. 
in how they are complete through Christ. That's what the Bible says. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So if they're going to be one with Christ, Christ is one with God. So they're going to be one with God. All right. Let's get back, though. Second Ezra chapter four and verse 32. And when the ears shall be cut down, which are without number, how great a floor shall they fill? Then I answered. I think that's all I need. Yeah, that's it. So you see, the wicked, like I said, the wicked is the whole world. The whole world is the wicked. All right, we're going to show, I'm going to show you though. The wicked is the whole world, the heathen nations, um, so-called Negroes that sin. You know, like I said, it's deeper than the flesh. Just because you look like an Israelite don't make you a Hebrew or Israelite or a Jew. Okay? God's seed is... They delight in the law of God after the inward man. They're Jew and the inward man. You see what I'm saying? They're one with Christ. They're in the body of Christ. They are Christians. You understand? They are God. That's God and Christ seed. Let's go to Psalms 54 and verse 5. Psalms 54 and verse 5. Oh, sorry. Psalm 59 and 5. Psalm 59 and 5. So you got to remember, right? In the beginning, Noah had three sons, right? So you have Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth is the father of the Gentiles. So he had the most, a lot of kids, right? So he's the father of the Gentiles, the heathen nations. Ham is, is Gentile and heathen nations too. Okay, and do you have the line of Shem, which come Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and where the Messiah come out of? All right, I'm gonna talk to you about that too. Um, God, Lord is willing, in Jesus' great glory name, Amen. Now, Psalm 59, verse 5 Thou, therefore, O Lord, God of hosts. The God of who? Israel. Awake to visit all the heathen. To visit who? To visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Who's the wicked transgressors? The heathen. Because he's saying to the Lord, awake to visit the heathen. All of them. Not just some. All the heathen. See, because all the heathen are the wicked. And the wicked are sinners. And the sinners are the seed of the devil. Okay? The heathen never knew God. They never knew the most high God of Israel. God only gave his law to Abraham. He only gave his law to, to the 12 tribes of Israel with Moses. That's who he gave his law to. He didn't give his law to anybody else. You see what I'm saying? Because you can even read that in um, Psalms 147. Nineteen to twenty, Psalms one forty seven. Nineteen to twenty, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. See that, and and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the Lord didn't he didn't give that to any other nation, but to the nation of Israel. Let's get one more. Call me the second Ezra. Ezra chapter 6. I believe it's chapter 6. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it.
I think it's five. Let me see. Yeah. Second Ezra is five and twenty seven. And among all the multitudes of people that has gotten thee one people. See, God only has one people. He's not the God of the whole entire world. He's the God of Israel. He don't change, right? And among all the multitudes of people that has got thee one people, and unto this people whom thou lovest. See that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God only loved the nation of Israel. Thou gavest a what? A law that is approved of all. So to that one people who he loved, he gave a law that is approved of all. Okay? So, Psalm 59 and 5, Thou, therefore, Lord God of hosts, the God of who? Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Come with me to Psalms 9 and 15. You know, the word always been the truth. This is what we got to understand, you know, but they try to, you know, they, they had to deceive the whole, the whole world. This is what Satan do. Because there's no truth in Satan. He's a liar, the father of it. And a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth. This is what he do. He's a deceiver. And that's why he's going to, you know, get his punishment in the end forever. Psalms 9 and 15. The book of Psalms, chapter 9 and 15. The heathen are sunk. Oh, no, is it? Psalms 9 and 5. Excuse me. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. See that? Thou hast destroyed the wicked. So who's the wicked? The heathen. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou has destroyed the wicked. That's why God said, I've broken the evil in pieces and created the good. I live, saith the Lord. The Lord have broken the staff, the power of the wicked. You see that? And the power of the rulers, the kings of the earth, the heathen are the kings of the earth today. But this is why the Bible says in Revelations that he have made us kings and priests unto our God and his father. Because that's the saints and the elect. You see, because through Christ, they are kings and priests again. And they're going to reign in the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? And the kings of the earth, they're going into captivity. Because the world was made for Israel's sake. The righteous Israelites. It, that's why Christ had to come. God had to come. And he became poor so that they can be rich. Because his people were poor. His people were you know, the ones blind. His people was the ones in darkness. You see, because of Satan. You see what I'm saying? That's why Paul explained to King Agrippa, you know, about the Gentiles who are, who are Jews born in other nations. That he, to turn them wet from the power of Satan unto God. You see, because God's seed was in darkness. But the light Christ came and opened their eyes. You see what I'm saying? Through the gospel. Remember, the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And that's what the gospel did. Shine into his saints and his elect. That's why they're going to wake up to know who they truly are. And turn from the power of darkness, the power of Satan. Turn from the old man to wicked deeds, sin, right? Turn from the, the wickedness. And they're going to put on the light. They're going to put on the knowledge. They're going to put on the wisdom. They're going to put on the word. They're going to put on Christ. They're going to put on God. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out the their name forever and what forever see that that has put out their name forever and ever because you know they're ruling but they're it's coming to an end you see what i'm saying that's why the bible says satan 
you know, is going to be sealed up for a time, right? He's going to be, um, he's going to be, um, so that he won't deceive the nations no more for a time, right? Yeah. And set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years is fulfilled. See, because the kings of the earth are going into it too. They're going into um to captivity. You see what I'm saying? So there Satan is gonna be and cast him into the and set a, see and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Because during the thousand years, there's going to be a thousand years, the, the saints elect going to, um, they're, they're going to be in the, the first resurrection. And they're going to reign with Christ as kings and priests upon the earth. You see, and the nations during that time, if they don't listen, then the Lord going to punish them. You see, like he said, they got to keep come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, you see, and, and to worship the king, you see. And then if they don't come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, then the Lord ain't going to send them no rain. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said this is going to be the punishment of all the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. There ain't going to be no more war during that time. You see what I'm saying? Um, but after the thousand years, Satan going to be loose a little bit. Why? Because... The final, which is the battle of Gog and Magog. So he's going to go out to deceive them one last time. And um, he's going to try to bring them to, to pass the camp of the saints, which is Jerusalem. Going to try to bring them to storm over to, to Israel, you know. And the Lord going to, you know, send fire and brimstone down from heaven and burn up, you know, all Gog and Magog bands. You see? And that's when Satan ain't going to be cast into the lake of fire, where the beast and the false prophet are. Because the Lord Jesus, the Most High God, when he come at his second coming, he going to destroy the beast and the false prophet already and throw them in the lake of fire. So they're going to be in there from the whole time of the thousand years. All right? Because he's going to destroy them at his second coming. All right? But Satan going to be sealed up for, for some time. And he's going to be loose. And then that's what's going to happen. And then that's when after the battle, the battle of God and made God, then Satan going to be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night. And um, whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. And that, that's it. That's it. You know, that's the truth. And the only ones that's going to be written in the, in the book is the saints, the elect. The ones that um, the Lord already knew from the beginning. All right. So now. So now. Um, let me see something. Now you see why the Bible says Satan deceived the whole world. Because this is what he do. Let's jump down to verse 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. Uh, Psalms 9 and 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken you see that so whatever they did do is gonna ha is gonna be you know done to them you see so you, you see what i'm saying so this is what i'm saying um all the things that they do or done god ain't forget no matter thousands of years go on, God don't forget. He don't change. He remembers it all. 
That's why he remembered Mystery Babylon and Revelations from that from the beginning, from all from that time in ancient time to now. He still remembered. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and 13. Isaiah 26 and 13. Twenty-six and thirteen. O Lord, our God, other lords beside Thee have had dominion over us, but by Thee only will we make mention of Thy name. The other lords, see the heathen, right? The heathen, other lords beside Thee. O Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. You see? Let's go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 6. Who is these lords, right? It's the heathen. O Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. But by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Okay. Uh, second Ezra 6 and 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. See that? And to devour us towards the heathen, who those lords are. That devoured his people, his sheep. His sheep, right? Now, this is why when you go here, let me see. go to Psalms 2 and 4 this is why this is what the Lord do see remember it said it said um they have taken their own foot you see their own foot is taken because Psalms 2 and 4 he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh see the Lord shall have them in derision see so he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh because why the Lord knows that their day is coming. Let's go to Psalms 59 and verse 8. The Lord knows that their day is coming, the heathen, the wicked. He knows it. Psalm 59 and verse 8. But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shall have all the heathen in derision. See that? So the Lord shall laugh at them. Thou shall have all the heathen in derision. He's going to have them all in derision, right? Um... jump down to verse 13 consume them in wrath consume them that they may not be and let them know that god ruleth in jacob where he rule at in jacob unto the ends of the earth you see that so god rules in jacob let's go to wisdom of solomon 4 and 18 so the lord shall laugh at them right now what i'm saying here is not to hate the nations or the heathen because the saints and the elect are going to love them. They're going to love their enemies. They're not going to hate them. I'm just bringing out what the scriptures say. 
And this is what the scriptures say about the heathen. Okay. The heathen is the wicked. All right. Wisdom of Solomon. So the saints are going to love their enemies. Right. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 18. Yeah, I think it's oh yeah, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter four and eighteen. They shall see him and despise him. See, this is what um let me see. This is what they the heathen do or the wicked do against the righteous. <laughs> right, against the righteous, man. <laughs> let's jump let's let's read from Wisdom of Solomon chapter four, verse fifteen. This the people saw and understood it not, neither lay laid they up this in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his who saints see not with the world is with his saints his grace and mercy is to his saints so is the saints and elect are saved by the what the mercy the grace of god who is the grace who is the mercy christ so his saints and his mercy his grace and his mercy is with his saints so christ was sent to his saints and his elect right and that he have respect unto his chosen, the ones he knew from the beginning. That's what the Bible says. You have been called, you see, chosen. <laughs> Thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living. And youth that is soon perfected the many years and old age of the unrighteous. See, because the saints, the elect, all things are theirs. So they're going to judge the world and they're going to judge the, they're going to judge angels. For they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what God and his counsel have decreed of him and to what end, and to what end the Lord have set him in safety, that righteous man. They shall see him and despise him. You see what I'm saying? That's what they did with Christ. They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to what? He's going to laugh them to scorn. See that? He shall laugh them to scorn. And they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. You see that? Let's go to Psalm 37 and 13. See, because the Lord sees that his day, day, day is coming. Let's start at verse 12. Let's start at verse 9. For evil, Psalm 37 and verse 9. For evil doers shall be cut off. See, that's the wicked. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. That's why it says, and I think it's Isaiah 25, and I think verse 9. And that day it shall be said, Lo, this is our God, and we have waited for him. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be not be. Remember, he told Ezra and that that um if the evil don't pass away then good cannot come remember now that's why when you go here when you go to daniel this is why the lord was explaining this here to daniel well yeah when the lord allowed daniel to understand this here call me to daniel too and 35 see so the four kingdoms, which is the four beasts, they going to have their time, right? But what's going to happen to them? So Daniel 2 and 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces. Remember, he said, I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good. I live, say of the Lord. The Lord have, um, the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the power of the rulers. See, because these kingdoms are going to have their time, but they're not going to never be ever again. They're not going to be no more. They're not going to be. That's why the Lord, it says in Re Revelations that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, the saints and the elect. And none of those things are going to be remembered ever again. It's not going to come to their mind no more about this stuff.
because the um the gold broke into pieces together and became like what the chaff of the summer summer threshing floor. Remember he told um Ezra how much to the time of threshing shall come. You see what I'm saying? Threshing floor and the wind carried them away. What those kingdoms that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great great mountain and filled the whole earth. See that's God's kingdom. So God set these kingdoms up. You see, and they all having their time. But after a while, that's it. They they broke into pieces. That's why the Lord already did it already. He already broke the evil in pieces already. Because during these kingdoms, he's setting up his kingdom, which shall not be destroyed. See? And the stone, the, the stone that smote the, the image, that that image which is the the four kingdoms. Because um became a great mountain and filled the whole earth so all those kingdoms were broken into pieces they're they're, they're going to be like the, the chaff of the summer dressing floor the wind going to carry them away you know like when you look outside and you know like when you outside right and you see like a piece of paper on the floor and it's like strong wind and it just blows it somewhere that's how it that's what the lord is saying just like that these kingdoms are the wind carried them away it was found no place for them no more you see what I'm saying? Okay. Let's go back to Psalms 37. Because the evil is is gonna be is 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 it, you know. Psalm 37 and 10. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. You see that? Yeah. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. You see that? But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. That's what they did to Christ. When, they, when he was on the tree on the cross, you see what I'm saying? They were saying, oh, you the son of God, come down. And they were saying all these things against him, the wicked. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> the Lord shall laugh at him. You see that? For he seeth that his day is coming. The Lord see that their day is coming. You see? The Lord sees that the day is coming. People may say, oh, there is no God, right? But that's what God said. The fool have said there is no God. He said, the fool have said there is no God. And that's why he said this here. And um, he told Ezra. Second Ezra chapter eight. Let's start at um fifty. The Lord is explaining to Ezra here: For many great miseries shall be done to them that dumb dumb that in the latter times, see that's the last days, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. And that's what the nations do. They walk in great pride. The heathen have great pride. Pride is not of God. But understand thou for thyself. You see what the Lord did to Nebuchadnezzar. He took his kingdom to make him understand that God gave him that. And he didn't get that himself. And he made Nebuchadnezzar to dwell with the beast. You see what I'm saying? Until he understood that it's God that controls all things, not man. See, he had to humble himself. The Lord humbled him. You see, they have walked in great pride, but understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you, he's talking to Ezra, you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteous is made, is made ready. A city is built. See, that city, they're being built. And rest is allowed. That rest belongs to the people of God, like Paul said. Yeah, perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from among you. You see that weakness and the moth is hid from you and corruption is flooded into hell to be forgotten. Sorrow are past and in the end is showed the treasure of immortality to the saints and the elect. And therefore ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. See that? For when they had taken liberty, they despised the most high, thought scorn of his law and forsook his ways. Moreover, they have trodden down his righteous. See that? 
and said in their heart that there is no God. Yeah, and that knowing, the Lord said, yeah, and that knowing they must die. For the th for as the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are preserved for them. For it was not his will that men should come to nothing. You see that? So, the Lord said pain, uh, the Lord said, um, yeah, knowing that they must die. You see? So thirst and pain are prepared for them. For it was not his will that men should come to nothing. All right, so um, let's go back to Psalm 37 and let's jump down. So the Lord shall laugh at him for he see if that his day is coming. You see, let's jump down to verse 17. This is why the Bible says, um, the Lord created all things, even the the day, um, even even the wicked for the day of evil. See, because evil shall slay the wicked. For the arms of the wicked, seventeen. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. See, God's seed is only righteous. His seed is righteous. God don't know the wicked. This is what we gotta understand. He don't know the wicked. He knows the righteous. His seed is the righteous. Okay. Let's go to Micah 5 and 15. Micah 5 and 15. This is why they didn't want the world to know this truth. And that's why they set up pastors and buildings to teach people. And they teaching them lies. Why? Because these are these are sheep and, and these are wolves and sheep clothing and these buildings made with hands. But the world can't see it. And they still go into those buildings and think they're praising and worshiping the creator of heaven and earth. Which they just doing is just following the devil. They just following Satan. You see what I'm saying? Because those pastors are wolves and sheep clothing. That's why Christ said, you know them by the fruits. Good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. So therefore, you know a person by their fruits, whether they are of the Lord or not. You know them of their fruits, because Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. And so his ministers can masquerade as people of righteousness. That's how he's, he deceived the world. It's a spiritual battle. It's spiritual. Okay? You got this. You got this. You got the um, spirit of error out here. And you got the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is in his people, the saints and the elect. You got the spirit of error in the world. You got the spirit of the antichrist in the world. You see what I'm saying? So you 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 got to be careful so you won't be deceived out here, especially in these last days, because there's a lot of false prophets out here. A lot of false prophets is out here. So you got to you gotta understand. That's what the Bible says. Uh, test the spirits. Try the spirits whether they are of God. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible tells us that no man can call Jesus accursed. No man by the spirit of the Lord can call Jesus accursed. You see what I'm saying? Um, those that confess that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh is not of God. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, those that deny the Father and the Son. You see? That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Those that say that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, spirit of the Antichrist. Because like I said, there's many false prophets in the world today. Okay? So it, it's, it's spiritual. As you can see, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual battle that the saints, the elect, are in because they're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So that's why they're gonna have the uh, they're gonna put on the full armor of God. This word, you see, what I'm saying they're gonna put on Christ. That's the point. They're gonna put on the light, the knowledge, the wisdom. Right, the word, the word of life, the eternal life, they're gonna put on Christ, they're gonna put on God. 
So just waking up and saying I'm an Israelite because you're outside of parents, that's not that's not it. It's, it's, it's deeper than that. Micah chapter 5. And I mean, I'm sorry. Is it? Yeah, Micah. I went to Malachi. Micah chapter 5 and 15. The Lord said, And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. You see that? That's why when you look around the world right now, what's happening? The heathen is 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 getting the plagues of God. It's the truth. But they want you to think it's global warming and is this and that. That's to keep you from knowing the truth. But it's the most high plagues that's upon this earth. Because when the Israelites was in the land of Egypt, in the land, the Lord sent the plagues there. You see what I'm saying? But now the Israelites, the, the saints elect are scattered to all nations. So all the nations is Egypt. The plagues is upon this whole world. This is what people ain't realizing and understand, but they're not going to understand because they're just going to keep going on about life and life and life and, and not understanding what truly is going on. You see what I'm saying? But it's the plagues of God. All the floodings around the world, tornadoes, you know, strong winds, uh, volcano eruptions, wildfires, death, famines. They not realizing that the God of Israel is doing this. I'm just being real. The God of Israel is doing this. It's not the earth. It's not global warming or nothing what man is telling you. That's to keep your mind off of the truth of what's really happening. The sightings in the skies of what they're saying is UFOs. Those that understand know. When these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Seditions among men. Rioting. Evil increasing. Murders. Robbings. People going to people's houses with the sword because of lack of bread and great tribulation. Those that know, understand. But the world can't understand. That's why the Lord told Daniel, in the end, the wicked ain't going to understand, but the wise is going to understand. The wicked is not going to understand what's going on. But the wise is going to understand. Knowledge shall be increased. Okay? So the Lord said, I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. That's why he said, in the latter days, you shall consider it. He's going to perform the, the, uh, the thoughts of his heart. You see? In the latter days, ye shall consider it, the Lord said. It's going to get worse than this. It's going to get worse than this. Psalms 1. Let's go to Psalms 1. I think it's Psalms 149, 145, Psalms 145, I think it's Psalms 145 and 7, or Psalms 149 and verse 7, yeah, Psalms 149 and verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. So the Lord said in verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. So we know the word of God is sharper than two and um, two in, than any two-edged sword, right? And that's why the Messiah don't need a sword, an instrument of war, because he is the living word, right? In the flesh. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment what? Upon the people. Okay, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgments written, written this honor have all his saints. So this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. 
And that's why when Christ returned, the nations are going into captivity. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said, um, uh, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity because the Lord allowed, the Lord gave Christ, um, he, he, uh, let Christ rule over the nations. You see what I'm saying? When you go to Psalms chapter two, you go to Psalms chapter two and, um, verse seven to nine. I will declare the decree the Lord have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's Christ, the Messiah. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession, because this whole world belongs to God. Thou shalt break them with a what? A rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So that's why the Lord said, and um, he that overcometh, um, what he said? Let me see something. that overcometh Yeah, so this is why Jesus explained to the churches here, Revelations 2 and 26 to 27. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You see that? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Because we just read that in Psalms chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. Okay, so that's why the saints and the elect are going to reign as kings and priests with Christ. And they're going to rule the um the nations with a rod of iron. Okay? So the nations are going to go into captivity. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 1 and 8. Second Thessalonians 1 and verse 8. Let's start at verse um 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, who don't know God as the nations, and, the, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, see that his elect. And to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Okay? They don't know the Most High. The heathen, the nations. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter. First Peter chapter... Uh, so, yeah, First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen and eighteen. For this time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. See, so judgment is going to begin at the house of God, which is Israel, right? And if it first, the house of God, which is Israel, the saints of the elect, and if it and if it first begin at us. What shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? So what's going to be the end of them that don't know God and them that don't obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved because the righteous is going to be barely saved. You see that? That's why the Bible says we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That hope is Christ, right? But there the righteous is going to barely be saved. You see, that's why the disciples ask Christ, then who can be saved? And he, he told them all things is possible with God, you see, because the Lord is going to wash them, his saints and his elect. He's going to cleanse them, you see, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if the righteous scarcely 
barely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Who is the ungodly and the sinner? The heathen, the wicked, those that sin. And the, the sinners are who? The children of the devil. So where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You see? Let's go to 2nd Ezra. Chapter 6. Let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Verse 54 to 57. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So everybody comes from Adam, right? And the people also whom thou hast chosen. You see that? The people whom thou also have chosen. So everybody comes from Adam, right? But you got to understand that the seed, everybody comes through this flesh, right? Satan operates through this flesh. So Satan has a seed. His seed are who? Who is his seed? sinners you see god's seed is in this flesh also but like i said when they wake up they're going to change the old man put on a new man so the devil's seed or who sinners the wicked you understand that's satan's seed god's seed is the righteous they're, they're not sinners everybody going to come through this flesh Yes, but the devil is the one that sold the wicked, the, seat, the sinners. You see what I'm saying? All right. Um, of him come we all in, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee. That's why the Lord explained. That's why he said um, in 2 Ezra 4, he said, um, For the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. You see what I'm saying? And how much ungodliness have it brought up until this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? So everybody comes from Adam. You see what I'm saying? But that don't mean everybody is the seed of God just because they come from Adam. All right? So 2nd Ezra, let's continue. 2nd Ezra, chapter 6. And we left off at, um, we finished 54. Verse 55, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes, but for the righteous Israelites' sakes. Um, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. You see, they're the seed of the devil. They're the tears. Okay. And, and the heathen worship idols, you see what I'm saying, which is devils. You see. But be like on the spittle and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So that means God don't care for them. You see, because they, they don't belong to him. They belong to the devil. You see what I'm saying? They work. This is what they do. That's what the Bible says. They that make them, those idols, are like unto them. And what are the idols? Devils. So they that make them are like unto them. Devils. Okay. That falleth from a vessel, and now, O Lord, behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. You see why they didn't want the world to know this truth? You see why the apocrypha was taken out? They didn't want the world to know this truth. To, hey, you're the seed of the devil. You see what I'm saying? They had to make them to believe like they be they're of God. You know, and that anybody can come to God. But we're in the end. The end has manifested. Knowledge is increased. So what's in the dark eventually comes to the light. Have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 6 to 10. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 6 to 10. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You see that? 
So whosoever abideth in Christ and God sinneth not. Why? Because they're born again, so therefore they cannot sin. Because they're born of God now. The saints of elect was in this flesh doing the works of the flesh. And they were the what? The children of wrath. Right? But when they put off the old man and put on the knowledge now. So therefore they're born again. This is why Jesus told Nicodemus, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except the man be born again of the spirit and water, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Because it, this flesh here cannot inherit the kingdom of God. God is a spirit. So you have to have a spiritual body in order to enter to be in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God in Christ. So they're in this flesh. But now they're born of God here. That's what it's about. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, right? So a person that doeth righteousness is righteous, right? Just like a, a like Christ said, a good a good tree cannot bear forth bad fruit, and a bad um, tree cannot bring forth good fruit. So it's going to bring forth what it's going to bring forth. So if a person is righteous, do a um, do righteousness, stay righteous. If you do it, um, if you do wickedness, you're wicked. You see? He that committeth, oh man, do of righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of who? The devil. You see that? The scriptures is, is very clear about that. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. You see that? So the devil sinned from the beginning. How? You see? Just like I showed you how through Cain, you see, Cain, um, Satan is the tempter. He works through the flesh. So Cain did the works of the flesh. He killed his brother Abel. So he shed innocent blood. You see what I'm saying? So the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see? That's why the word was made flesh, came in this body, this weak body, and was crucified in this weak flesh, so that he could redeem his saints and his elect from this body, this body of death. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So that's why it comes into being born again. Well, you got to be born again here. That's what the Bible says. Being born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Put on the, therefore put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Therefore put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but transforming by the renewing of your mind. Though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. This is what it's about here. You got to be renewed here and born again here. The flesh is the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the saints and the elect are going to be delivered from this body of death. They, because they're going to get the redeemed body when Christ returned. The, the, the tabernacle was made without hands. The, the, the many mansions in heaven Christ spoke about. You see what I'm saying? They're going to bear the image of the heavenly. Okay? Like the Bible says, it's sown in, in weakness. It is raised in power. The body is a natural body and then it's a spiritual body. All right. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin because now they're born again by the word till we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God into a perfect man. So now they're a perfect man there. They have put on Christ. Christ is formed in them, as the scriptures say, they have put on the Lord. So therefore, they, they're not going to sin no more because they're born of God now. OK. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. See that? Because he is born of God. He's a new creature in Christ. He put off the old man, put on the new man. The old things is passed away. All things become new. Right? 
be because he is born of God. In this, listen to this, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. So you have the children of God and you have the children of the devil. Those that do wickedness, those that sin are the children of the devil. Those that do righteous is righteous. Those that are born again are the, and do of righteousness is the children of God. Is the scriptures is very clear. Okay, so you have, it's letting you know the devil have a seed. You see, go back to Genesis. I will put enmity between thy seed and his seed. The serpent. Who is the serpent? The devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Right? Because if you don't even love your brother, you are, um, that is, um, Where's that scripture at? He that hateth his brother is in darkness. I know the scripture says about you're a murderer. If you um I think if you hate your brother, brethren. And no murderer have an eternal life bonded in them. Yeah, it's one of those scriptures. First John 3 and 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever, verse 15, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. See that? And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. See, because it's just like Cain and Abel. You see, he killed his brother Abel. He's, he's a murderer, Cain. You see? Because Cain was of that wicked one. He was, he was of that wicked one, the devil. He was the seed of the devil. Okay. Let's go to John 18 and 37. Because just as Christ said here, John 18 and 37. Just as Christ here, he told Pilate, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should be a witness unto the truth. What is the truth? The word is, is truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Because Christ knows his sheep. You see what I'm saying? Those that belong to him. He knows his sheep. Like the Bible said, the Lord knows that are, those that are uh, those that are his. And let them that name of the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You see, because his sheep is going to hear his voice, meaning his sheep is going to hear this word, the gospel, and they're going to do the will of the Lord. They're going to follow Christ. They're going to do what is right. They're going to do the will of the Lord. So if you're not of the truth, you won't be able to understand the Bible. You won't be able to understand the scriptures. You're not going to listen to the gospel. You're not going to hear it. But you're going to just stay in sin. You're just going to stay the way you are because the devil children can't understand the truth. But Christ's seed, who, you know, his saints, his elect who are in this flesh, 
they're going to hear his voice. They're going to understand. They're going to hear him. So it's, it's, it's spiritual. If you of the truth, you're going to hear the scriptures. You're going to hear the, the gospel. You're going to hear Christ's voice. If you're not, you're not going to hear his voice. You're not going to hear the gospel. So I actually come into the end of this video. Uh, God Lord's willing, I'll see you on the last part, which will be the last part. God Lord's willing, Jesus, great glory name. The last talk about who is the children of the devil. So now this last um, talk that we're going to do, um, I'm going to show you how Christ only came for the seed of Israel, how he... Um, only his seed well christ and god's seed are only israel or only the saints to elect so i'm going to show you how he came for them okay i'm going to take you back to the line of abraham i'm going to take you back to uh yeah through the line of shem to abraham and uh all the way to now and how that line that seed christ came for all right. So I hope this video was very edifying. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the God of the Hebrews, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one true living God, God Almighty, the Father Jesus, in the name of his word, wisdom, and son, and knowledge, and word of life, and eternal life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. All right. Love to all. Peace be unto thee. Until next time. God Lord is willing. In Jesus' great glory name. Amen. Bye-bye.